Hello everyone, this is Gary from Fantastic Fundas and today in this last lecture on the topic princely states during our struggle for national freedom, we are covering the story of the city of, of the, or rather the, of the princely state of Hyderabad. Uh, you can see this uh, state of Hyderabad over here. Now, if you observe this state, it's quite large in area. In fact, among all the princely states in India, Hyderabad was largest in size and because it had large area then um, in a country like ours it becomes almost obvious if not always that it would also have huge population like Maharashtra has a huge population so does Bihar and UP right Rajasthan and Kashmir Jammu Kashmir of, of course are the exceptions anyway so the Nizam's dominion over here and you can see this over here that the his dominion is spreading across multiple states and that is the reason a uh, reason that Hyderabad of that time had of course Telugu speaking population was there approximately 50% of it was Telugu speaking and then after this there were Marathi speaking people now you don't have to remember these percentages I'm just telling it to you to explain it to you okay so now you can see clearly like this spreads over Maharashtra areas Marathi is there Telugu of course is there and then definitely it would also have uh, Kannad speaking people which was approximately 22 percent of the total population so that's how it was there so what I mean to say is that the majority people over here they were speaking Telugu and most of the rest of the people were either speaking Marathi or Kannad. These three were the main languages of the state of Hyderabad that people were speaking. Now, please do remember this fact because I'm going to use this fact in just one or two minutes. Now, after this, uh, you must know that uh, the head of the state of uh, Hyderabad, uh, his, his name was uh, Osman Ali Khan. Osman Ali Khan. Uh, when I was giving you a very brief introduction of the medieval history, uh, there are like one or two errors also in that uh, particular lecture. I have specified that in annotations in any case, if anyone is still confused regarding that. In any case, I talked about how a person fled from Mughals and started his own um, sort of an empire or the princely state of Hyderabad and in that lineage there was a Nizam uh, who, who became Nizam in 1911 his name was uh, Osman Ali Khan and he continued from 1911 to 1948 right? now um, normally I don't do this but um, I have a very interesting story. I went to Hyderabad once and there I met few people and I came to know of this story that there was this chain lying along some pond in Hyderabad. Uh, like normal you have huge chains around the pond and everyone thought because it was very dirty and people will all often spit on that. So everyone thought that uh, this is just an ordinary iron chain lying down. So one day the uh, uh, this Nizam comes, one of the Nizams, it's, it's a very recent story, just f like few decades back only. So Nizam came, right, his, his helicopter landed very near to the place. He asked his people to pick up the chain and he left. And you know why? Because that chain was made of gold. I mean, these people were really, really rich. So Osman Ali Khan, you can well imagine, right? He was very rich people. It said that even today, some of the walls, in the in this uh, Charminar area of Hyderabad, it still they still have gold in them. It's, it's a room. It might be a rumor, but that's what I did here when I went to Hyderabad. Now people from Hyderabad can always add something to this. And but overall, what I want to tell you that he was a very rich guy. But do you know that why and how these people were so rich? You see, you must always remember that the kings are rich because people suffer. This is the basic thing you will see in French Revolution also. This is what happened in India. Everywhere this has happened, right? Like that's how governments get rich. Everywhere it's the same. So our Nizam is also a rich guy. And how he got rich? Because 
he had with him what is called as a uh, sarf khas now sarf khas sarf khas is the estate or an area the revenue from which uh, totally went to the uh, the income from which went to the king and to meet the royal expenses then that is how these guys were rich and then not just this like like this is one part of his income and there were many other uh, one third of the uh, states areas income you know other income from other areas also went to the king and so on and one more way of the these kings getting rich is a legal uh, is is a, a typical word now this word can come in your exam also the word is uh, vethi vethi or vethi whatever you want to pronounce that so vethi right vethi is nothing but uh, what is in english called as uh, begar and what what is in simplified words as forced labor okay so this is what uh, you need to remember over here forced labor that is how this is what the source of their income now the atrocity of the king to get rich was all these but their atrocities were not confined just to this, this much their atrocities even included uh, on the religious lines i'll tell you how the king over here was uh, uh, being brutal this was done through the cultural and the cultural and uh, religious uh, suppression okay that this is what the nizams were this nizam in particular let's not say call all nizam same this nizam in particular did this and he also uh, promoted he said uh, urdu was the main language the main court language urdu was made the language now you do you remember the languages the people sp were speaking here I, I, either it was telugu or it was marathi or kannad <coughs> very few people were speaking urdu as the language and urdu was made the court language now can you imagine the plight of the people in this you see first of all please do not link urdu to muslims or hindu hindi language to hindus or punjabi language to sex please th these things there might be some overlapping but these things are not exclusive in this sense and i can give you more logic to it i personally know many sex i have many sex friends all the sex friends of mine they do not speak punjabi now i know a lot of muslim they are my friends they do not speak urdu right i mean language and religion we need to uh, understand that line separating these two in in that context you have to understand this particular point that the urdu was made the court language whereas the people of the region whether the hindu muslim sikhs whatever they were speaking either telugu or kannad or marathi but not urdu and urdu was made the court language so there is sort of suppression only in itself and not just this for the promotion of urdu language at that time osmania university was made and uh, can you know uh, other languages of the state uh, were neglected all these languages and uh, even you know at, at any level even at private level it was not allowed to promote any other language at this time next thing that this guy did is that the muslims were were given disproportionately large share of jobs muslims were given disproportionately large share of jobs especially the higher jobs the higher acclaims the now please don't now start saying that muslims are bad please just because one king also it doesn't does not make muslims bad it was that person bad he was just politicizing using this thing to maintain his rule it has no relation to the muslims in general you you need to understand this thing and appreciate this thing lot of people keep on saying that uh, their king was so so all are bad this was so so like you know you have bad people in almost all religions almost yeah is all is there in every religion please understand it in this context only do not divert from this path but i'm just giving you some factual information to understand that topic now the arya samaj movement uh, which was quite strong in the 1920s it was it grew quite well arya samaj movement the arya samaj movement now these people had uh, you know they, they they wanted to do uh, havans i hope you understand havan right 
now in these havan they would need a place for uh, called havan kund now for these havan kunds they had to seek the permission of the uh, nizam office nizam's office now this is like very weird it's like you know um, asking a muslim uh, to uh, that he can pray only if he gets the permission from the government or ask yes, you know telling a sikh that you can go to gurdwara or some place only if you have the permission it's as bad as this i mean how can you uh, uh, talk about permissions and this this is a personal matter so this was a suppression and and the worst thing happened right uh, actually what was nizam doing he was projecting hyderabad as a muslim state but trust me like in i have been to hyderabad few times and people live in complete bonhomi over there except for rarest of the rare some arguments which can happen anywhere irrespective of the religion people live in you know universe that mutual respect and love for each other i have seen it there happening the present status is this but this guy was trying to convert into it into a muslim state which is of course wrong because india is a secular state with this place for all now this this imagination of hyderabad only as a muslim state it got it it gained pace with the uh, in after 1927 at that time an organization came called it uh, ittehad ul muslimin i'll just write that for you ittehad ul muslimin okay now this ittehad is muslim ittehad ul muslimin it said it it's, it was based on the notion that the nizam is the royal embodiment of the muslim sovereignty in the deccan that's that's that was their belief right now it is in this complete context that i have talked to you this and the one before this that i talked to you it is in this complete context of political economic social cultural religious oppression that the because so so there was social economic political cultural uh, uh, oppression of the people it is in this oppression which led to the growth of political consciousness of the society political you see in india the best part about the people is that irrespective of whatever your religion is you respect your nation that is the best part of india like not many countries can match our standard when it comes to this so political consciousness arose in the people and this finally this led to the states people states people movement in hyderabad and in, in this background we will try to understand the complete issue now movement has started right this is what i just said but how do how is this movement going to happen now again we'll do this exercise uh, what you need to do is just stop it here and think of what can be the modes of movement you see in my lectures the way i teach the way i learn things as and which i am sharing it with you is there's no need to remember anything ever in the world right there are few basic things of course you have to do that generally speaking you don't have to remember things if you understand it you can well imagine it and if you can imagine it you can easily write it now here you need to just put you know take a pen and copy and just try to write down what can be the points under the kind of movement that will be happening over here okay it's very simple right okay now let's see if you have written this uh let's st start with it first is the non cooperation movement of course it will have impact by do you the hyderabad is surrounded from all sides by different states why will it not get impacted by what is happening in the uh, british india and other uh, princely states of india the national non cooperation movement will come here khilafat movement will definitely play a role over here so khilafat movement also impacted what else will be here you see charkha will be popular here then uh, this uh, the nationalist schools the national schools will become popular here you need to remember the decade to write these points and this is at approximately 1910 or 10s decade that that is the time when we are uh, thinking about now at this time two people were very popular here one was gandhi and other 
these were the ali brothers you see even the muslims were opposing the nizam ali brother was were there please try to understand this has nothing to do with the religion issues are generally communalized but most of the issues are secular in nature and one very particular feature of uh, the movement in hyderabad was that it was you know the hip thing to display hindu muslim unity it was uh, very popular at that time and all this uh, thing uh, happened inside hyderabad also and outside hyderabad also and when they meet you know when they they would be meeting in meeting they would discuss that how operation is to be stopped how vethi or it can also be called as vet begar how this can be stopped so these were the things that were being discussed now you know when the best part about culture is that culture cannot be suppressed 100% whenever anyone uh, tries to suppress culture it will bounce back and this is what is happening here and especially in the telangana area of the state of hyderabad this movement regarding culture was very very strong and uh, after this then you know came the cdm uh, we have already discussed that in the one of the earlier lectures the cdm movement so 1932 to 32 cdm was going on and after that what happened that the people were arrested people arrested uh, because of the movement and then people were arrested in this because of hyderabad area also and these people and these people they came together and stayed together in jail now in jail you have nothing to do what will you do you'll just sit and talk you know and when you talk what do you talk you talk about nationalism you talk about uh even our king is bad and this guy says britishers are also bad oh everyone is just mistreating us let's fight them and this is what they decided in jail and they each uh, motivated each other and that is the struggle how, that is how the struggle went on now you already know this that the people uh, here mainly spoke three languages so the people in the andhra area the people who were speaking telugu uh, they formed uh, what is called as uh, andhra mahasabha andhra mahasabha right and and the people in maharashtra the marathi speaking people they formed maharashtra parishad and uh, just one remains and that is kannada speaking people because uh, state of uh, hyderabad also had kannada speaking people they formed kannada parishad right and these all these people came together to form hyderabad state congress okay so that's how uh, the the things are gaining momentum please remember that this is definitely not branch of the indian national congress at that time in spite of this name hyderabad state congress okay and uh, but th when this organization was made this hsc let's call it hsc hyderabad state congress so hyderabad state congress was made even before it had formal existence it was banned by the nizam because it was going to uh, it was going to protest so when you ban something you will have to give a logic and you know what logic this nizam guy you know he gave he said that you are all communal hindus in this and the muslims have not been given enough representation now again you see just divide the people wherever the need be that was being said up you know first of all this was neither communal nor muslims were having poor presentation representation in this uh, body actually the hidden agenda was that because hyderabad state congress would challenge the might of the nizam and thus nizam whatever pretext be you know he will just ban it in any case uh, then there were negotiations that what should be done okay fine then take our care and obviously these negotiations will fail when the negotiations failed there was launch of a satyagraha movement whenever any movement is there it is important for our exams that we must be aware of who was the leader of this movement the leader of this movement at uh, this satyagraha it was swami i'll just name it for you swami ramananda ramananda tirth 
right so this name might turn important for you in coming times and he he this guy was a marathi speaking ramananda tirth you can guess from the name also almost so he was a marathi speaking nationalist and this guy swami ramananda tirth he was a combination of gandhi and nehru why because in his lifestyle he was like gandhi and that's his description upsc can give you description of the person and in in his uh, uh, and and nehru uh, whose ideology was liked by him and followed by him so what i mean to say is like if i ask you question which of the following is a person who is known for his gandhian lifestyle but nehruvian ideology who will be that person swami ramananda tirtha obviously there would be many other people but i'm just giving you an example of this question here now um but the satyagraha uh, we started in 1938 and uh, like th- when this got popular gandhi ji he started writing letter to the prime minister of the state of uh, princely state of hyderabad his name was sir akbar hydri gandhi ji would write letters to him and after two months of the protest of the satyagraha the satyagraha movement was withdrawn now you will ask me why was this withdrawn i'll tell you the reason is little complex over here the reason is that uh there were other organizations also here at this time and one was arya samaj and arya samaj ji people they had launched their own satyagraha movement at this time it was against the religious persecution of arya samajis and obviously it had a clear religious objective and at time this satyagraha by arya samajis as per the written history by bipin chandra and few other authors it took communal overtone that is one typical thing that 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 will happen in all the religious movements so it it would sometimes take religious overtone and or we can call it religious uh, communal satyagraha it was being confused with the nationalist satyagraha but the but what's bad about this all is that because of this thing what the government did government mixed this particular satyagraha and this satyagraha they linked these two and called them together as communal satyagraha and because of these confusions lot of people wrongly even to this date say that it was a hindu movement no it was not a hindu movement one is communal satyagraha which got mixed with these two these two were different it is the hyderabadi nizams version that these two were same but truth is it is not one is fighting for the country one is fighting for the religion and probably country also so there is like this is purely just for the country not religion that is the difference right anyway now while all this was going on like we are studying about movements here so while the movements were going on along with the satyagraha satyagraha is uh, going on on the one side theek okay? hai right now on the same at the same time there was another movement going on on which upsc did ask questions and passed it is the vande matra movement okay vande matra movement and this movement uh, was actually by the students of colleges in hyderabad city uh, because they were not allowed to sing vande matra so what they would do uh, because they were not allowed to sing even in their hostel prayer rooms now this movement is important and it spread very far throughout india but what is so particular about this movement it is the outcome of this movement you must always mention this in your answer this give you gives you marks the outcome of this movement was that it created a uh, young and militant young and militant cadre which will turn into activist in the years to come ab you now you please understand gandhi ji is getting old um, bhagat singh is no longer there somebody has to fight who will fight so it is the, one of people whom these cadres which play a role in the 1947 and that is why vande matra movement is very important for 15 august 1947 you know i'll just raise that topic again lot of people say this happened rn mutiny happened or bhagat singh died like they just one quote bhagat singh died we got freedom or rn mutiny happened we got freedom or mahatma gandhi was there we got freedom how can you say that even our freedom is the result of multiple many many movements uh, going into the parallel so you see 
okay and one of them was the vande matram movement so so far the people who participated in this movement was one was uh, satyagrahi one was arya samaji though they it has a, like little different connotation also then there were these uh, vande matram movement people then there was a state people congress which was hyderabad state people's Con congress which was banned even it the band continued on this then not just these people then left leftist they also contributed to this and of course gandhi is always there in this movement he he has his own role in this movement now now when all these people are fighting in this in this background something happened and that something is that in this background this time uh world war 2 had started when the world war 2 started british said no we are not going to contribute you may do whatever you want to but we will not contribute we will not listen to you do whatever anyway okay fine we thought right, fine britishers won't do anything so we launched quit india movement in 1942 and as i told you in the earlier lectures i hope you remember this that by quit india movement formally the all india state people conference movement the congress fighting all of them came together as one team this was a huge huge step which is going to get us freedom so we started fighting as a one team in the states and at this uh, whether it was hyderabad or at this in the center against delhi everywhere we were fighting as a team even gandhi ji himself said that now we will be as, uh, as fighting as one team together explain the implications of fighting together against the britishers to the people at this time only. so in other words the the movement here now had little change in the character and that was of course it was fighting for the welfare of the people in the state that's number one now it was it will also fight for the uh, independence of the country right and number 3 that it will fight was for the integration of the country now whenever the question comes to you regarding the integration in our country the process of integration the answer should include this movement also the hyderabad princely states movement that is how you can get more marks in your paper and at this time in in this movement only a uh, sarojini naidu was also arrested and at this time many popular slogans came for example gandhi ka charkha chalana padega goron ko london jana padega that is gandhi's wheel will have to be spun uh, while the whites will have to return to london so such things like you know became very popular at this time but uh all this movement one bad thing also happened and that was during the war only uh if you remember i talked about operation barbarossa in which russia had attacked germany sorry germany had attacked russia now because it germany had attacked russia germany attacked russia russia was a communist country so when germany attacked russia to the communists in india said that this is no longer like others war it is what is what they called as the people's war that's that's what they started talking about and that is how the they 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 started uh, a, a a problem a tussle between communist and the non communist and this tussle had its impact on the movement in hyderabad as well why what was happening because when germany attacked russia uh, communists said that we must support british why because british were fighting germany and since we are supporting the british so this quit india movement should not be done and this was the division of the people there were two main people under whom the all the split happened and all the young nationalists who were uh, opposing the british uh, their leader was at this time uh, keshav rao now nobody is going to ask you these names still i'm giving it because then lot of people will message me you have missed this this that so keshav rao is the person and the people who supported communism they were uh, led by ravi narayan reddy ravi narayan reddy this might be useful to the people who have history optional 
last year also like you know like i had three or four people messaging me that they cleared exam they they, they attempted good exam because of uh, uh, these videos f in their history optional exam so that's pretty interesting uh, for me also but in this fight between communist versus non communist obviously the people will try to take the benefit and so did nizam and what it did it lifted the ban on communist the that's how it, it went everyone uses others so when the ban is lifted all the nationalist people are in jail and all the communists are free communists are free when you are free when you can roam in the society what do you do you meet the people you you build up your base and this is what communists did at this time but what is interesting is that when war ended in 1945 these way communists said okay now let's fight british also so essentially the communists were also nationalist but they had their agenda of communism quite high in importance now we've talked about all these nationalist fighting and communist fighting we also uh, need to know what were peasants doing because uh, they also had an important role we have covered the peasant movement to some extent earlier also now peasants were particularly active in 1945 46 particularly especially in 1946 later ha later half uh, they were active and uh, there were very powerful peasant struggle happening especially in the uh, nalgonda district now you don't have to remember that where was struggle going on just to make the story here i am mentioning it in nalgonda district it was happening and since they are peasant what kind of struggle they will have they will have struggle against the illegal levies that they were that were being charged they were against the uh, wait begar i have what already talked to you the meaning of it and all the illegal seizures of land and illegal exactions such things were there okay and clashes were there and uh, between peasants and even the landlords they had their own uh, men who used to fight so that that's how like there were violence like use of sticks and uh, 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 stones and bricks and so on so um never violence is there violence is very easy to suppress and the people here got violence and the violence was suppressed by the use of more violence and the movement ended there movement ended there so as in nothing happened but at the same time people were more aware now people were uh, you know a confidence was built up in people even that they can resist this this is important because this confidence is being built up in the people of hyderabad here and hyderabad was not a uh, under british uh, at that time and uh, and uh, and because of this the, the nationalist movement did not have much impact on the people of hyderabad but now because of all these movements even the people of hyderabad were gaining confidence that even they can fight the britishers and finally uh, it so happened on 4th june 1947 uh, there came a viceroy of india whose name you all know very well his name is mount batten and he announced at a press conference that very soon we will leave india for good on 15 august and then on on 12th and just 4 june and just after 8 days on 12th june the nizam announced that after the lapse of the british paramountcy the nizam would become sovereign that is how the struggle to the liberation of hyderabad is building so uh, people went after this there was lot of violence whether or organized or not and to suppress the, and there were made many movements also to suppress all this violence over here uh, to suppress this violence over here nizam brought the force of uh, this ittahidul muslimin the force was called uh, was of called uh, uh, the the troopers were called as razakars and these razakars they were issued even arms and they were allowed to fire on the protesting crowds and that that is how the protest uh, got stronger and strong and when the protest got stronger nizam was under uh, pressure let me just write it again there were protests and this led to uh, nizam under pressure okay now because of this pressure he signs the stand still 
agreement under which all the things would remain same as they were this was signed in uh, on 29th of november 1947 right now uh, th this is with the indian government between nizam and indian government and uh, th but at the same time nizam was very clever he also intensified the repression against the people now he's playing a double game here and uh, people now started defending themselves and in defense of the people uh, communist played a very important role obviously others were under arrest and communist played their due role in protecting the people and all the peasants they were organized into groups called dalams dalam is just a nothing but a, a, like you know the hindi word dal dal right and dal means just a group it it means a group so they were organized into groups for the whole of the activity against the nizam they were given training in arms and anti nizam struggle was thus happened uh, well uh, while the struggle was going on against the nizam what people started doing because they were peasants now they were their main anger was against the uh, landlords so meanwhile they also started attacking the landlords take away the land and redistribute among the peasants and then while all this protest and fights were going on approximately 9 months after the uh, this called uh, uh, the december uh, right so it it became clear that it's no longer possible to have negotiation with nizam and it was ra rather in september 1948 that the things were clear that the nizam will not negotiate and on 13 september 13 september 1948 indian army moved in hyderabad and on 18th of september within 5 days 18 september 1948 nizam surrendered that is the end of nizam here nizam surrendered and in this army attack important role in from indian army side was played by colonel j l choudhury so his name becomes important for us now actually i'm breaching the scope of modern history i'm touching the post independence history this was done through operation polo you need to never remember this okay so that's how it went on and once uh, this happened the process of indian unification was complete indian union was completely united and the people welcomed the indian army right and uh, there was scenes of jubilation everyone was very happy the right? celebration was uh like there was little problem in the celebration because at this time communists said no that uh, we will continue to struggle and they did not put the arms down so communist at this time did not put the arms down and that was a, a point of worry but that's another like it's a long story let's not uh, dwell over it at this moment now in this whole story i have take a refer to few books and a lot of reference to internet one of the books was by swami ram tirth himself uh, in in this i have his book called memoirs of hyderabad freedom struggle anyway um so that's the end of the hyderabad movement also but before i conclude the end this lecture i would like to conclude that this lecture and the last two lectures put together so the conclusion uh, there are few conclusions that can be taken from this last three lectures including this one number one conclusion is that uh, that satyagraha satyagraha might not always have same uh, viability or effectiveness especially when it came to the matter of indian states so we had to uh, uh, indulge in violence at this time number 2 number 2 is that the, the the violence was not unique to uh, hyderabad it did happen to s uh, varied extents even in travancore and uh, patiala okay and odisha so like so, so many places this happened but the idea is to first always avoid violence as far as possible that is the basic idea i'm not justifying violence but i'm just telling you that how it ultimately happened over there it might have had happened in some different manner for example like it might have worked other way but 
in this case it did not work so whatever it takes basically to uh, for the unity of the country and next thing is because violence was more acceptable here that means the even communist and the other people who in wanted to indulge in violence their acceptability this uh, was more the situation was more favorable to them and here also like you can take example of hyderabad travancore patiala and odisha that's how things were going on and just as a last sentence this very difference of methodology of fighting non violence versus violence can also be explained as the reason this can be explained as the reason for which congress did not merge its nationalist movement with the state people's movement initially there can be many reasons why why was violence here because the nationalist movement did not happen in the princely states at, as it was happening in british india say less less say in the british india people were getting politicized since 1900 or even before that here the people were not politicized there was more awakening on their side than this side thus there was easier way here was violence and but then it took a toll lot of people got killed so it's a it's a endless debate we can uh, continue in some other lecture right so this was the main con conclusion these were the main conclusions you can take out of these last three lectures including this one now we'll end the lecture here for the next lecture in the next lecture we will be uh, talking about the topic of the capitalists we have talked about communist enough so we'll talk about capitalist and the nationalist movement their role were they selfish was congress capitalist party or so we'll we'll talk all that detail in the upcoming lecture and ju just another one more announcement and this is again like if please do share this lecture with others the more you share the easier it will be for me to make more videos faster and all cover all the subjects as quickly as possible you share the videos and if you like the videos i'll get to know that you are liking this format and finally if you want all these videos to come in your email box then you need to subscribe to us and you can do that by clicking over here on this button so that is all thank you so much for watching this